just give you a quick uh, brief uh, overview of uh, why, who Nine Seconds is and what we do. Um, so we're a global um, video creation platform. Um, we basically work with brands um, to help them create videos. Um, because video, create, video production is a complex um, thing. And so um, we allow brands to use our platform um, to simplify the video creation process. Um, so mainly we work with about 12,000 uh, creators um, since our inception in 2010, and then over 3,000 brands. Uh, we've produced about a total of 30,000 videos um, across 160 countries um, and 150 cities. And yeah, so basically I just want to start off with <coughs> how um, the data team works in nine seconds. Um, so the data team works with various stakeholders across the organization. Um, so that might include marketing, engineering, product, etc. Uh, but mainly if you see um, the error, that's, uh, we mainly um, work with the engineering team, um, especially when we were to release um, some data products. Um, so a quick um, overview of a data team at 90 seconds. Um, so we, have, we split um, the roles into broadly three categories. Um, <coughs> sorry, the data analyst, the data engineer, and the machine learning engineer. Um, so I won't be going through the detail as to like what these roles are, because I think these roles are quite common in most um, kind of organizations. Um, but I think what you might find surprising is that all these three um, roles um, actually do uh, play a part in maintaining data pipelines. Um, this is also because we believe that um, the, each um, individual in the data team should be um, have should have some responsibility over um, maintaining a good data quality. And so here's a, just a very big picture um, view of how we use um, GCP um, Go Cloud Platform for data and DevOps in our in, in nine seconds. Um, so our main uh, data sources can be split into two main groups. Um, so the internal platform at 90 seconds, and also the external API. So that might include like stuff like Google Analytics, um, Video Intelligence API, um, etc. Um, so we use um, Airflow and Google Kubernetes en engine um, to um, kind of um, extract, transform, and load the data um, into BigQuery um, as our data warehouse. And from there, we apply, uh, we use data in BigQuery to apply them to marketing automation, uh, machine learning, and business intelligence. Um, and so now I'll let Tommy uh, go through with you um, the, uh, how the infrastructure that uh, we have in 90 seconds. Um, thanks, Aaron, for the introduction and the insights on how the data team at net, at net seconds work. <coughs> okay, so the next part is a bit more focused on the uh, infrastructure size of the data team. So, so that we all know that uh, the uh, data workload is always the requirement of the, of the data workload is always different from the others. Uh, but then, thanks to the like the wide variety of the host of services and uh, the well written documentation of Google, of Google Cloud Platform, that allow us to desire uh, of, uh, desire a system with optimal performance and uh, and affordable cost as well. So I want to go through some of the uh, main points that uh, throughout the time uh, at. Uh, <coughs> So that we can, yeah, uh, throughout the time that we have concluded on the journey with the Google Cloud Platform so far. Uh, the first one I want to mention is the deployment flexibility. Um, at 90 seconds, and we use uh, GK. And the first thing I know is about uh, the GK of Google Cloud Platform and start uh, the cluster creation. Uh, it's very straightforward. We have uh, many ways to create a cluster. Um, and if we want something fast, then we can just uh, offer the UI, just click and then we can create a cluster to our world. The second thing is uh, if we want to just like uh, refer, we are we can just give a common line to uh, run like G Cloud, create a cluster or something. And we can actually write a like, simple script and we can keep track of it. There, but uh, at 90 seconds, then we are uh, embrace what that we embrace the infrastructure as code. So we use the Terraform for like creating resources. And uh, right now, this is the approach that we use to create cluster at 90 seconds. Uh, 
we write on uh, Terraform modules, and then we can use it across uh, across multiple teams. Uh, so each team can just like take the Terraform modules, and they can create the cluster for themselves, and that's very useful. And um, the next part is uh, we also use uh, Helm to deploy the application uh, in Kubernetes cluster, including the services from the data from the data team. So, um, so far, who doesn't hear about Ham? Ham is a packet manager for Kubernetes. So that um, Ham is just a way to conventionalize the deployment. So you can imagine something like um, in Ham we have a set of templates and we have a set of va a set of uh, values. So for each of the environment, I mean, like for example, for staging environment and for production environment, we have a set of value, we have a set of different, se uh, different secrets. And at the deployment time, we just apply the set of value into the set of template to create a Kubernetes manifest and we, de we deploy. So, and also it provides us the ability to like roll back the deployment in case something went wrong, for example. And um, for the secret management, then at first we use the uh, Kubernetes secret for secret management, but then there's something, uh, there's an issue that uh, not all of us have, like, did not have the knowledge about Kubernetes. So not everyone prefer to use like KubeCTL to create sec uh, secret as well. So that uh, we choose Vault as a replacement. So in Vault, then we can use uh, the UI to update the secret. So that uh, it's a uh, really friendly UI, so every team, even though they are not uh, from the technical background, they can still even use uh, the UI to update, to update the secret that, we, that they want to. And um, next one I want to talk about like uh, RPG Airflow. Like Airflow right now is a really important uh, service at 90 seconds. So Airflow with us is like the new ground. It's a game changer as well. Since uh, introduced, then Airflow has become uh, a crucial part of our system. So that uh, with Airflow, we can create a really effective workflow to solve uh, a lot of business requirements, uh, which before that we need to have some guys need to manually do it, but right now uh, with the Airflow app, we can finally uh, fully automate those uh, workloads. Uh, this is one of the features of the Airflow that um, we just uh, successfully uh, rolled out recently with the Airflow version uh, 1.10.3, so this is a Kubernetes executor. So with the, with this feature, then we don't need to like re reallocate or recreate the worker for Airflow anymore. So every time we have a new task, then the uh, Airflow scheduler we just call the call the Kubernetes API server to create a pod that run that uh, task and then it will be terminated after the job finish. So the setup is really clean and simple right now. Only the scheduler and the web. And one more feature that I want to mention about Airflow is the Kubernetes, Kubernetes operator. Uh, as we know that Airflow is written in, in Python. And then at first then we somehow expect that our all of the developer will know about Python. Uh, they need to write and DHG uh, with Python. But with the uh, Kubernetes op operator, then the, de the developer can choose their own language, choose the language they prefer. Uh, they can write on anything like Go, Ruby, Python. As long as uh, the, ser the, uh, the service they write uh, is packed into the Docker image. And then we can just uh, use that Docker image and run as a DHG task. Um, the second point I want to talk about uh, is the high availability in Google Cloud Platform. So in the Jiki, then the master node, the SLA of the master node is like 99.95%, so it's quite high. 
So I ha we personally we haven't made any like big outage with the GK at all. So our workload is like really safe when running on GK compared to like running our in-house Kubernetes cluster. And also the version upgrade is quite easy as well. Just a uh, like click a button on the uh, Google Cloud UI, and that's all. And uh, this is one of the advantage of uh, GK over the like the self-built Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I, per I personally uh, face an issue with my previous company then it's really hard to upgrade the Kubernetes clusters but now uh, things is quite e easy and I have a lot of more time to focus on all the workload. And since the application is deployed on Kubernetes then it's uh, like it's uptime quite high because you don't need to worry about uh, like when to when it's dead and how to restart it because uh, Kubernetes already take uh, take care of it. Uh, the third one is the cost. Um, we use the preemptive instances for our staging clusters. Uh, maybe in the future we can use the preemptive for production as well, but uh, not now. So the initial idea of the preemptive instances is that uh, we, you can have the same amount of compute resources with the cost uh, five times less than the on demand instances. So, so that, yeah, it's quite cheap if you run, if you use the preemptive instances for the test cluster, because like <coughs> test uh, or staging cluster sh uh, should not be like available doesn't be necessary to be available for like 100% of the time, something like that. And uh, GKE also allow us to like make the most out of the resources we have. Like right now, I can run the airflow cluster among the other workers as well. Like for example, the cluster that we run airflow, we have like uh, five more services. So yeah, the u the utilization is quite okay, like around seventy to eighty percent, which is quite good. So we don't waste the uh, like the idle resources. Um, this is uh, maybe a bit out of scope, but I also want to mention about the default setup. Uh, right now, default is also one of the uh, important services uh, for us. Like it keeps every kind of secrets that we have right now, um, so that we need to ensure that the vault it's the vault setup is uh, high availability. Mm -hmm. So uh, we deploy vault in uh, three different uh, ACs, so that in case one AC goes down, then everything is still working as normal. And uh, this is the overview of the um, deployment of Airflow on on Kubernetes. Uh, as you can see, the Kubernetes executor will create a job on demand and depend on how many resources we have, then we can, in theory, we can scale to infinity. And the next part I want to introduce us to like go a bit um, deep inside the, uh, like the video intelligence and some of more use cases uh, in the data team. Uh, thanks, Toy. I'm Nasir, and I'm a machine learning engineer in 90 seconds. So, thanks to uh, Tommy and Aaron, we, uh, who built the infrastructure and foundations, we were able to leverage AI and machine learning to uh, give impact to the business. Yeah, so we have a lot of video data, uh, 8 years, 160 countries, 30,000 videos, um, 40 terabytes of video. Uh, the structured data that we have is uh, the video brief, uh, the creators involved, uh, industry, and unstructured data is a video. So we uh, we use the video intelligence API to extract structured data from the unstructured uh, videos. So uh, the first application we built is a video search engine. So uh, it was with that much data, it's uh, crucial for producers to be able to find uh, uh, relevant videos that they want to make. So. 
So what we did was we combined uh, the structured data that we received from video intelligence, and uh, now uh, users can search uh, videos by uh, supplying an object. So once you have the object, it also returns um, the list of videos that have these objects, and what you also have is the time that these objects appear in that video. So for example, you could search for smartphones or sunsets, uh, and then you'll get a video that contains those items, uh, as well as uh, whatever fil filters that, uh, such as industry. So this is the architecture of how we made it happen. So uh, we use the video intelligence API uh, that goes to BigQuery, uh, then we work with Elasticsearch, and then that goes into our 90 seconds platform. So uh, another application that we use is um, a video performance. So what the problem was that uh, once a video goes into production, uh, the brands need to know how well the video is performing. Uh, so that includes like whether there's a viewer uh, should drop off, or which scenes or which shots are unpopular, and which could cause the videos, to, uh, the viewers to stop watching. So. Um, now with the data that we received from video intelligence as well as our Google uh, AdSense, we could identify uh, certain, uh, certain entities or certain shots that could be iterated to improve uh, the video performance. So we could recommend actionable insights with this tool. Uh, <coughs> sorry. So uh, this, was the, this is the architecture how uh, we build it. So similar to the video uh, search engine, so we just combine with the AdSense and the YouTube uh, API, and then that goes to BigQuery, uh, then that works with Elasticsearch, and that goes to our platform. So uh, we also built a, a recommendation engine. So. Uh, why it was important was that um, we need to give the right jobs to the right people and also vice versa, uh, the right people to the right jobs. Uh, and then we also need to make sure that when we do have new creators joining in the platform, uh, that jobs were also given to them so there was no bias involved. Um, so previously the process for uh, how we gave jobs was manual. Uh, so we had a producer manually uh, finding creators to fill uh, to fill jobs. So now with this uh, recommendation engine, uh, we take on certain metrics. So we could figure out how relevant a certain creator was to the project. So whether he has done it before or whether he has done similar projects before. So um, so then the recommendation engine would uh, recommend that creator. So it it has become almost uh, automated. Yeah. So that, that's it from us. Um, maybe it actually kept it short. Um, so maybe if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Do you run any transporting? Sorry? Do you run any transporting? Yeah, so uh, the question was whether we ran any transporting. Um, that's right. Um, we currently run a transporting service, but only for the premium customers. Um, so if they request for it. Yeah, is the transporting doing uses? Um, Uh, the transcoding, uh, do you use the uh, um, graphics engine uh, like GPUs or it is just purely CPU? Um, so currently we call an external API to do the transcoding, uh, but I'm not sure what their infrastructure is. Any other questions? Thank you so much, uh, Adam, Najuddin, and Tommy. Uh, so we just have two talks left for the evening. Um, we already have our speaker for the next talk here. So this is Daniel Poon. Uh, he's going to be talking about transforming uh, pets to cattle with infrastructure as code. Very interesting title, I guess. And uh, Daniel is uh, the lead engineer for DevOps and architecture at Vigo. He's, he's done a lot of talks. You, you're, if you're a part of some of the other meetup groups as well, you might have, uh, you, you, you might have come across Daniel's talks. And uh, Daniel, um, so we we asked, we basically asked Daniel to write a little bit about himself, and he kind of wrote this up, and it's a, it's a little bit of a tongue twister. So I'm just going to read it out for you all. 
Daniel likes building stuff for people that build stuff to empower them to build stuff better. So over to Daniel for his talk. All right, thank you guys. Um, give me a second, let me just set this up. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Daniel. Um, I'm from WeGo, and I've recently taken the position of lead engineer um, of DevOps and infrastructure. So um, what I want to talk about today is about transforming pets to cattle um, using infrastructure as code. So a couple of speakers um, that have just spoken have been talking about infrastructure as code and the importance of it. Um, so I would like to dive a bit deeper into that as well as do a live demo. So this is just an overview of uh, what it's going to be. A lot of it is going to be quite um, visual when we run through the code as well as see the effects of the demonstration. So just 